Peter Bales here, cardiologist. Now, a video today on a very commonly prescribed medication, and the class of medicines are ACE inhibitors. Now, examples of ACE inhibitors are medication like perindopril, ramipril, trandolopril, quinapril, enalapril, and these obviously finish off with the term pril. And that class of drug, as I mentioned, are called ACE inhibitors or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. So it's a long, long name, but they are a very commonly prescribed medication. And the most likely reason why you might be on this is for high blood pressure. They are very useful at lowering blood pressure. They act on various enzymes in the body, particularly around the kidneys, to actually help reduce blood pressure. And they're very, very effective. The medications are often very, very safe and well tolerated. But in some individuals, one of the more common side effects you may experience is a cough. And that cough can be dry, can be nagging, can be irritating, can often happen at night. And it's you know something that you really can't put your finger on. It's often this class of medicine that has been associated with the cough. Other things to look out for, particularly when you're starting off on this medicine, is to be wary of you know it lowering your blood pressure. And that's really why we often put you on this medicine to lower blood pressure, but your blood pressure may drop. So obviously keeping an eye on this if you can at home or checking it with your pharmacist or your local doctor just to see how your blood pressure is responding to the medication. Another thing that we need to be careful of is the potassium level. The medicines themselves acting on certain enzymes mean that they typically retain a little bit of potassium in our body. So we don't want you going overboard and having high potassium rich foods. And in particular, you know, when people are having multiple bananas, for example, well, the bananas have a very good source of potassium. And when you combine it with these medicines, well, we don't want those levels to be high. So we often check a week or two after starting therapy, check your blood tests, which, and that will show us how your kidney function is performing, but also how the potassium and the salt levels in the bloodstream are performing. And that's just the only little thing we need to be wary of with this medicine. Other reasons you might be on this are that these medicines have also been very useful in patients who have diabetes. And with diabetes, there is often this notion that the kidneys themselves become a little leaky to protein. And as we lose more protein, well, these medicines can be very useful to help slow that process down. So if you have diabetes, if you have high blood pressure, this is often a very good class of medicine to be on. Another reason you might be on this medicine is if you have a condition known as congestive heart failure. Now, the term itself is obviously not, not the best when we talk about failure, but the medicines themselves are actually geared towards improving the heart strength. And that's really one of their great benefits. And over many, many decades, data has been very, very strong to show the benefits of this class of medicine at helping to improve the heart muscle strength. They are also used after a heart attack. So if somebody has come into hospital and had a heart attack, they might have had a stent placed to open up a blockage. And initially, there might be a little bit of damage to the heart muscle because of the lack of blood flow. Well, these medicines can help with the way that the heart recovers and helps improve contraction and strength of the heart. So they are a very useful class of medicine to be on. They're very commonly prescribed. We often start at a very low dose and work our way upwards. And as I mentioned, there are various types of these medicines, but they all fall under the umbrella of the ACE inhibitors. Thanks for joining me. Until the next video, bye for now.